you everyone for having me um, present the information to you today. Um, uh, we've been working on the DEI tools. Oh, by the way, my name is Natasha Telger. I'm with Illinois WorkNet with SIU Carbondale and located in Springfield, Illinois. And if you ever have any questions, uh, you can always send them to me. The best way to get a hold of any of our uh, LA WorkNet team is to send uh, questions to info at LMIWorkNet.com and we'll go through that again later on. You'll, I'll make sure you have our information so if you have any questions. But today, <clears throat> one of the things that I'm just going to start out, I have a picture of the packet that you should have received or you, you, you should have there. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to start out with the PowerPoint. And the PowerPoint uh, uses scenarios. And so the intention is uh, that we just introduce you to the tools that are available through um, LMI WorkNet for DEI. And we're going to uh, introduce those tools to you using a scenario approach. And then after that, we're going to have a demonstration of the tools. And then what we'll do is um, you can have some time to um, you know, work at the computers that are there, and I'll be available to answer questions, that sort of thing. Now in your packet, you'll see that you do have a PowerPoint, and this is what I'm going to be covering. Uh, if, if you want to take it out and take notes, that's Great. Uh, if not, then just so you know, it's for your reference later. Then in your packet, you'll see we have uh, one side. The left side is labeled Get Started. And that has the different resources that are available online. And I'll show you that a little bit later. But these are available online uh, for our partners to help you get started um, getting your staff into the DEI tools and access to the DEI tools as well as having your students apply. And then we also on the right hand side have tools for provide and document services. And these are instructions that specifically cover the resources that we're going to cover today. Now one of the things I just want to preface this whole uh, webinar with are the tools that are available currently today uh, were are are available. You can start using them today. Uh, not a problem at all. There will be um, there will be um, some updates that will be made that are specifically for round five and that's um, so that information will be based on the performance data and reports that are needed um, through for the information that's available through LMI WorkNet. So keep in mind, these tools are currently available to you. They were originally designed for the DEI Round 4, but also understanding and building out for DEI Round 5. And they will be updated. Okay, so getting started with your PowerPoint. Again, the idea with the DEI program, as you know, is to uh, provide, uh, reach out, provide services to help people reach people with disabilities, reach their career training and employment goals. And one of the things that LMI WorkNet is doing is providing some tools that you can use with your integrated resource team so that you can look at uh, customer information as it relates to career training and employment and help um, and uh, review the information, collaborate over it, and um, have a mechanism to help communicate with the customer or the students as well. Some of the tools that we – I'm going to go ahead and move this down a little bit so I can hopefully make this a little bit bigger. Um, so we have uh, tools that are available for, you know, related to employment, training, uh, financial counseling and assistance, support services, we have different assessments and, and um, different user guides and, 
and so forth, and reporting tools that are available in Illinois WorkNet. And so one of the things, or a few of the things that we're going to cover with our scenarios is we're going to take a look at um, outreach, uh, recruiting participants for DEI, then um, we're going to talk about applying online, how do we get those people into the system so we can consider them enrolled in DEI. Then we'll take a look at the assessment intake tools that are available and ways to uh, provide or ways to document the services that you're providing and then also uh, different approaches or different tools that are available for running reports. Okay, so our first scenario is Allie, and Allie is a 10th grade female in District 214, and she's interested in IT. So one of the, the, some of the tools that we have that are available, we have a DEI flyer. We also have an application uh, checklist, so the uh, people know ahead of time before you get into the application what kind of information that's going to be asked. And the, both of them direct the customers to our web page that's available for, um, for the general public for, for DEI, and it's advertised throughout Illinois WorkNet. Now, one of the things I want to point out with this page is um, we, you can eat, so if you have recruiting materials or informational materials that are specific for your region, for your area, that you would like to have added to this page, that's not a problem, we can do that. So you can send those to us, and we can update this page to include your customized uh, recruiting and outreach materials. So in this scenario, Allie takes a look at the information with her parents, and they decide to go ahead and complete the online application. When you go to the page to complete the online application, there's uh, two options. You can take a starter, do the starter application, or you can do the full application. And so I was, I'm making the assumption that many of your students do already have a good working relationship with them uh, right now. So uh, I would assume that they would go ahead and complete the full online application because you're already working with them, and I, they can be directed to do so. Now, when they go to complete the online application, there are a couple options. Let me get my pointer out here. You can, in this situation, a scenario, Allie could complete the application by herself. Um, but for this scenario, we chose that her father helps uh, or completes the application on behalf of Allie. And so that is an option that uh, someone else acting as the um, guardian or um, agent uh, for that person can complete the application for them. They simply walk through the application and then um, select the Submit Application button. Now once they do that, then it populates the DEI intake dashboard. There's a couple things that are that go on with the round four. Once they complete and submit that application, it creates an account in IWDS and populates all the fields that they need uh, that we have. And so the LWDA career planners can go in there and just. Um, add you know the remaining information that is required in order to complete a guided application. Uh, that's an option. Um, with round five, it as of today, right this very moment, does not populate IWDS. But as soon as we get to go ahead, that it can populate IWDS. That's not a problem at all. That we can just simply turn turn that on. So for let me get back to our scenario, Dan is our career planner in LWDA 7, and he takes a look at his dashboard. Now the dashboard provides an overview of where people are in the process. And so 
right now, since we're talking about the application, we can see that Allie and her father have completed the um, online, the full online application. So what he can do is find that area on the dashboard and select the number. And he will be able to get a list of people that have completed that online application. And when he sees Allie's, he can uh, click on profile and he can see Allie's information, her full application. So one of the things that he can do is he can see that um, he needs to contact Lynn, the 214 partner, and they can discuss Allie's situation and current support structure and determine uh, the appropriate resources that um, she would need in, for an IRT, so for putting together an IRT around Allie. Now, one of the ways that we set up IRTs and give access for those partners to Allie's information is through a team. So uh, let me take one step back and just kind of explain that um, the information that's available in DEI requests, you have to have a certain role and have, you have to be given access to the DEI tools in order to see the customer information. So your LWDA career planners will already, I believe we have everybody in there uh, right now, so they can ask or so they can um, access the uh, information that's in the DEI tools. And they have the career planner role, which allows them access to see pretty much everything that's, that's available through the DEI tools for their region. Now, as a partner, what will need to happen is you'll need to uh, you know, be identified as an All My Work Net partner, and then they will let us know your first name, last name, email, and what role you should have. Should you have career planner access or partner access? And I would say in the majority of cases that you would have partner access. And this will give you access to the customer's information, but um, uh, limited information. The information that you'll have access to, you'll be able to see their services, and education and employment history and, um, and services are, are related specifically to the uh, uh, career employment training. And also, you'll still have access to the tools for you know, providing notes, reminders, and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, so there's, again, there's two levels of access, your career planner and your partner. And the way that partners get access to customers is through a team and being part of an IRT. So um, your career planner, your LWDA career planner will come in here. They'll select teams. Then when they go to the team, they'll uh, you know, give it a team name, give it a team description. Then they will select which partners to add to this team and which customers to add to this team. So any partner that's been added to this team will be able to view the customer information. Natasha, um, I have a question. Yes. Um, in this particular scenario, District 214 it, um, is starting with that customer. They would be the career planner or the LWDA planner. But then they graduate high school and they're now coming to the, the one stop. Can we, can we switch career planners at that point? Because I would assume the WorkNet Center would be part of the team, but then years later would become the career planner. The, yeah, it's up to the career planner will have access to all the customers that are in the and in either LES 7 or LES 6. Because I'm just trying to figure out how it would work when they're navigating through the system. The Alvia is part of the team, but now the Alvia is taking 
you know, the role of the planner a couple of years later, how exactly does that work? The LWDA, are, they're going to have, they're going to be a career planner from day one. So they're going to be they're going to have access to everybody that's in the system for their region. Okay. Natasha? Regardless. Yes. If we have, for instance, take a course in the IT pathway at the secondary level and have the students who would like to complete an application do that, can somebody at 214 be the career planner and then during the high school years, and then it switched to Pepper or Lisa or whomever at Elwia after they leave high school. What I would recommend, I believe, and we can work through this, but I would recommend that the career LWDA is a career planner. The LWDA career planner sets up teams that are for D214. Harper, you know, whatever they, the team is, and the, they add the partners on there. So whoever the, you know, the contact person is for 214, they would be a partner on every integrated resource team that's related to 214. And so they would have access to all the customers that are specific to 214. And then I would assume that they would have a team set up for Harper College. And so any of the contacts that are for Harper College would have a, would be a partner on all of those teams, whatever is appropriate. Um, and then they have access to all the people that are specific to Harper College. This might be something that we'll need to talk about to modify for round five. Because we start with a customer at 14 in many instances. So the, the primary career planner is going to be a secondary career advisor. In now, I, want, I don't want you to get too hung up on career planner versus partner. Right. Those are roles that we have identified that simply are used to um, give access to customer information, right? To we, allow or restrict access to customer information, right? But um, they're inputting the information and will input the information into Illinois WorkNet. Um, and yeah, they can do that. But you can have partner level and do that. Enter the information into Illinois WorkNet. Oh, they can at partner level. Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. But we'll talk through that because the flow is a little different with the youth. Right. So we may need to make some adjustments in that whole, the, the flow of the customer and how we work with WorkNet. I'm sorry, go ahead. So, yeah. So, okay. Um, but we can adjust that. I mean, we've done similar type things. If we needed to set up a specific role or, you know, add a, another subgroup that restricts the information to only certain customers, that's not a problem. We, we've done that before. We're just trying to keep the roles, we're trying to simplify <laughs> as far as, you know, the two levels of access. So, okay, so with the back with the scenario, so again, the tools that are available um, allow the partners um, and the LWDA to collaborate over the information that's in um, in the system uh, for the students, customers, and uh, then they can identify students and they can, can communicate with Ally and other partners. So, okay, and a sample um, for their IRT. You know, we have we have the LWDA and the LWDA would be, you know, take a look at if this person has a ticket to work and they can update this uh, ticket to work status. They have different, you know, training providers, support, support providers, but then when it comes to the point where they need to have, um, you know, transition into work, um, a few, in the future an employer could be added as well. 
So as I mentioned before, whenever a, an application is used to populate IWDS, the information is pulled in from the application, so it's pre-populated as much as possible. And the LWDA can, career planner can go into IWDS and complete the guided application and then um, determine you know, if they can be enrolled or become a wheel of registrant. Now the role of the other partners is to again participate in the ongoing communication and they can enter case notes and information for the customers that they have been given access to. Some of the tools that we have to allow partners to um, provide, you know, communicate, provide um, acts or uh, ways to communicate, uh, identify services or uh, referrals that they've made is we have a services referrals notes and reminders. And so, you know, you can add a referral, let them know, you know, who they're being referred to, you can, you know, different case notes, and also we have an area for reminders. Uh, we do have, with the reminders, we want the plan um, is to make the re reminder more of an actual like reminder. So you know you can set it so it'll set, pop up like a notification, kind of like on your calendar, to let you know that oh this is coming up in the next day or 15 minutes from now, something like that. Um, right as of today, it put a reminder in the customer's um, area in their DEI tool. <clears throat> so then another area that we have, um, we have an area called the progress, uh, DEI progress page. And so uh, currently the DEI progress page is used to collect the you know, uh, performance type information that uh, is needed for the round four um, quarterly cumulative report. And so the same tool will be used to help collect information for round five. And one of the things that we have um, for the round four is that if the person has not, or they, okay, they have their progress page. And if they are exited and it's been over a year, then they don't require their progress page to be updated anymore. But if um, the, it's been less than a year since they've been exited, or they're currently enrolled in DEI, it'll track um, if the progress page has been updated. So the you'll have the green section to let you know that all of these customers already have their progress page has been updated within the last 30 days. And if it's in the yellow section, then that means that the progress page needs to be updated because it hasn't been updated in the past 30 days. And sometimes that's just as simple as going in and saying, yes, everything is current, you know, saving and indicating that um, it has been reviewed. One of the things that I didn't mention, I don't think specifically, but um, the DEI or the, our dashboards are set up to give you an overview of uh, where, where people are in the system. So we have you know, our different categories. So in some cases we have you know, like the application, the DEI progress page and updates. And for each of these items that are listed here, you'll see a little info bubble. And when you click on the info bubble, it'll give you a definition of what it means uh, for that section of the dashboard. What, what does this count include? And then you can go over to the link. And whenever you click on the link, uh, the number link, it'll give you the list of customers, a filtered list of customers that meet the criteria that uh, for that specific area on in the dashboard. You'll see that there's color coding, and generally speaking, the white means it's kind of like an FYI, you know, this is for your information. Um, in this case, you know, we have a X number of DEI, um, enrolled DEI customers, and you know, 117 of them are WIOA registrants, 
uh, or Exeter's, and then the other ones are not uh, wheel registrants. So that's more of an informational piece. Then we have the yellow, which means that uh, action may be needed. Uh, so if we don't, if we can't, you know, for in this example, for the progress page, it's the same progress page needs to be updated. I was just telling you, you know, take a look at these people. They um, either need to be reviewed because there's potential for action or, or action as needed. And then green just means that, you know, they're good uh, on track, basically. And this is real small right now, but the point with this screen that you see right here is this is the DEI progress page. So there's an area for like ticket to work, are they enrolled? Um, if you're an LWDA and you have your customers that are in IWDS and they're WIOA registrants, uh, whenever they switch from being a WIOA registrant to exited, then it'll automatically update that information in the DEI progress page. For those customers that are not wheel registrants and uh, it's time to exit them from the DEI program, then you would just simply go into their DEI progress page and mark them as exited. And then they'll give you a date. And this uh, was you know, particularly important for the round four because um, they needed some data specifically for exited uh, customers. But um, still, that, that, that will be available. We have a section for their careers, so you can identify their career path, as well as uh, target occupations for them. There's an area that you'll be able to see the services that have been provided for this customer, the different training that's been provided for the customer, uh, the employment for the customer, um, so all kinds of information on the on the progress page. And then uh, we also now we're talking about reporting. So from this dashboard, as I mentioned before, whenever you select the, the number, then you will get a list of customers. And with your list of customers, you'll see there's different ways that you can change your filter criteria. Um, so you'll, and then you can search for, you know, you change your search, that's fine. Um, but you'll also see there's an export button. And so when you export the list of customers, you'll get um, a lot of information. So you'll get, you know, their contact information, you know, their services status, team information. You'll get all kinds of information from their export. So that's one way to pull a report for customers. Another way to pull reports is we have a tab, and it says it's reports. <laughs> and so from the reports tab, you'll have different, you'll see different types of reports that are available. And um, for example, we have a starter application report and an enrolled customer, uh, app, DEI enrolled applicant uh, customer report. So those are available. And then what we have for round four, when you go in there, you'll see that we have a, re a round four outcomes report, quarterly report, a round uh, four cumulative outcomes report. And so we'll be developing these for round five based on the uh, round five performance measures that were given to us by uh, Matt. So those will be coming. And then we also we also have a Teams report. Now, the team uh, report is especially useful um, and was especially useful during the last monitoring visit for round four that they could easily pull the report and see what team members are part of the, uh, you know, the, the team member's name, uh, what organization they're with, what type of organization it is, and uh, the organization's location information. Natasha, so, we have yes. a question. Lisa's got a question. Um, you mentioned that the um, one of the uh, reports will be the customer pool report, um, where they you can actually pull customers who who have been identified in IWIS. 
Um, for for us in particular, we're not, we're part of an L, part of LWIA seven, but not all of LWIA seven is part of this. So how are how are those customers identified? Well, right now, what you're gonna what you'll need to do is um, the the way I understand it for round five and I don't, let me tell you let me go back take that back and tell you how and what we did for round four. With round four, there's two ways that they could be entered in. Um, round four, they actually have a DEI screen where they're prompted to answer the questions on that screen if they have a disability, if they indicate they have a disability. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to pull that information um, from IWDS to say, oh, these people are already in IWDS. They already have all this information. They're already identified as DEI customers. Um, as I understand, for OEA 6 and um, OEA 7, they don't have the DEI screen in IWDS. And I need to talk to Matt to find out if how that's going to work, if they're going to add it or not or if you're only going to be adding your customers via the LMA WorkNet online application. I know under LVO, so, I know under DEI-1, we did have that DEI screen, but that uh -huh. was connected only for the adult side of the house. Uh -huh. um, and that was kind of a, a tricky thing because uh, DEI 1 started in LWIA 8, and then with the reconfiguration, um, I think that was the way that they identified it um, in IWID. But right. I, I, was just, I was just curious how that would work in LWIA 7 since this DEI grant is technically still only northern Cook County. Right. And for your, uh, uh, you're right. You're, it's, it's definitely a very good question. Um, I, and so I, th that's one of the questions I have for Matt. I just need to get clarification on that. And but with the DEI online application through LMI WorkNet, it we did it by zip code. Okay. So only specific zip codes will be allowed to complete an online application. Okay. Great. Thank you. And so the plan is to, um, what we had for round four is what we call an eligible uh, PWD pool. <clears throat> and so those are individuals that are already in IWDS and they have, you know, they meet the criteria, the age criteria, the location criteria, as well as identified as a person with a disability. And so that was a pool of people where the LWDAs could, you know, recruit people into the program that are already in IWDS. So um, we'll have something similar like that, I'm sure, for round five. Okay, and so this kind of gets to like right what we were just talking about. <laughs> um, so. As I mentioned before, this this well, this sample is the scenario for Chuck. He's a career planner, and uh, he uses the DEI flyers, which uh, direct you to the web page. Which again, you can have customized. I mean, if you have custom uh, flyers or information that you would like to have added to the site, you know, just please let me know. We can add it there. It's not a problem at all. And um, as I mentioned before, we have this eligible, it's really hard to see here because it's small, but uh, eligible PWD pool. And so for the scenario, I say, um, you know, it has out of, out of school youth, but I did get an email from Matt, and he said that really it's anyone, I believe, from 16 to 24 uh, in the areas that, you know, the eligible, the, the people, the the regions that where individuals are eligible and, you know, 16 to 24, and they have identified that they have a disability, then those customers would be pulled into this eligible PWD pool for round five. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so if you're, you know, an LWDA, you can 
uh, contact those individuals, you'll, again, you, you select the, the number. You'll get a listing of your people. And then it, you'll have a link so that you can see the customer's information. So you have their contact information. And if they don't want to participate, that's fine. You can select that they don't want to participate. And then they'll go into this red section. And that's really just to kind of move them into another area so you know that they've been contacted and, um, they're, and they're not interested at this time. If they're not interested at this time, it's okay. They can they can choose to participate later. It doesn't stop them from you know ever participating. They can participate later. They just would need to complete an online application. But if you talk to them and they would like to participate, you can select this button that says that basically they would like to participate, and it'll send them an automatic email, and um, you know you can customize it and to put. Uh, additional information in there, but it'll send it to the customer, and so um, it tells you know basically what to do, that you know what the program's about, and how to learn more, and how to complete the online application. Natasha, and then, the, I have yes. One question. I'm sorry to constantly ask questions. No, that's good. But. Uh, it can have the customer or the customer's parents fill out the application. Can we fill out the application for them? Yes, you can. You can do that. That's a very that's a good question. Uh, you can complete the online application for them. You would just once they go in. I can't remember if I have it on the next. Yeah, I do. I have it on the next slide. So oh, sorry, let me. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're you're ahead of me all the time. <laughs> um, good question, though. So in this example, you you're if you're if you're the person that's sending the email, then your contact information will be put down here, so that if they have questions, they know who to contact. And this information is pulled from your online WorkNet account. And so you know if they forget their password, it's not a problem. We have information in there that's a password recovery that you can you know, just let them know that this is how you recover your password or change your password. And then once they, um, another, another option here is that if you wanted to uh, recruit customers that have started an application but they haven't ever completed it, you have a listing of people that you can, you can um, contact there as well or the people that have completed the starter application. And the starter application has very minimal information. Um, basically, just says that, yes, they're in the, in the eligible area. And they um, indicate they have a disability, and they'd like to find out more information you know, for, for certain areas, for certain topics, whether it's employment, uh, training, and so forth. And so whenever you go to these links, then you'll um, you'll be you'll have a list of customers. You can go to their profile, and on their profile, the customer's profile, you'll see it says "Help Customer Finish Application." You can select that link and work with the customer to complete that application. Does that answer your question? Well, yes, for those that are in, can you just add a new customer and complete the application on your own? Oh, I'm sorry, one more time. I didn't I, catch yeah, it. So for the, uh, you answered the question for those that are already sort of in the system. Uh huh. But what about those that we identify outside and want to complete the application on their own? Right, okay, so that would go back to, let me scroll up in my. Point here. Yeah. So uh, what they would need to do again is they have to have an Elmi WorkNet account. So if they don't already have an Elmi WorkNet account, then one would need. You could you could do it with them, you know, sitting there next to you, or um, but the idea would be that they 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 need to have they need to set up they need to have an Elmi WorkNet account, uh, and then. Again, there's two options. You can have them complete it, or you can have it, you know, we have it as legal guardian or agent acting on behalf of the person with a disability. So yes, you could complete it for them. So 
So then, so actually, they have to they have to be doing the first part by through. Mm, right. Yeah. They need to have an L My Worknet account. That's the main thing. Okay. So even if they, you know, I guess another approach would be that, you know, if you just had them, they could go in and create an L My Worknet account and then just like start an application or do the starter application, then you could go in and complete the rest of it for them. I was just wondering if we create a, them as a customer and I would, they would get the Illinois Worknet account automatically and then we can go in to here and complete the application for them. Yeah. Don't drill the poll, I know, but I'm just thinking about you know customers that are you know students right now identified through 214. There's going to be quite a few identified all at once, and I could just see it much easier to streamline them and get them into the system, you know, faster. Yeah. Um. They would have, they would have an L My Worknet account. I mean, if they're in the system, I mean, if they're in the IWDS, then again, they would be pulled in through that eligible PWD pool. Well, they might not necessarily. And then, they wouldn't necessarily if we're creating them as a customer, because whenever we create a customer, they automatically get an Illinois Worknet account. In right. I but they might not necessarily have an application, I would, nor even have disclosed their disability yet. You know, you only need to provide right. very small information in the customer side of the iWIS system. I mean, if you put them in IWDS, then, yeah, again, they have an L My Worknet account. It's a loop. And then, you, yeah, then you'd have to, like, you know, log in. And yeah, you just have to have them at least, or or log in and do like the starter, or, or I mean, if you have their login information, you can just log in and complete the application for them. Oh, you can log in through their account. You can't just log in as a career planner. You have to get them into the system one way or the other. So, I mean, if they're in. IWDS, not a guided application, not a complete guided application, but if they're in IWDS, they would, and and they, you know, meet the age criteria in the right area, and they have identified that they have a disability, then it's automatically going to pull those people into that eligible PWD pool. Right. <laughs> and then from that eligible PWD pool, and they're still going to be directed to complete the online application. I don't know. Let's uh, we, we can. Okay, I think so. we can. Let's think about that a little bit more. You know, and see what we can come up with. I'm sorry, I'm being a pain. <laughs> You're not. No, most definitely not. Um, let me just see what our options are. Okay. Thank you. Mhm. Mm Okay, so let me go back down here, so, okay, okay, get rid of this little extra thing here. Okay, so um, we do have, as I mentioned before, we have a customer website, and then we also have the partner guide, so I'm going to go through all that we have for The, that we have currently in DA. And I'm going to move the captioning pod. Over here so that hopefully we can uh, get a larger screen share for you. Okay. So, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. So I'm at um, I'm on the Elmay Worknet homepage, 
and we have an area for our program. So you'll see that there's a DEI tile here that a person can select to get to the customer's overview page. We also have it available from the Disability Works homepage. So when you go to Disability Works, you'll see we have it as one of the main feature rotators as well as a featured resource. So from any of these areas, you can go to the DEI About DEI page. And this is the page that I was talking about. Um, if you have any information that you would like to have, you know, specifically for either specific counties, or you know, if you want the flyers on the, you know, under the flyer section, we can add it there. If you have specific information, um, you know, whether it's for your individuals or for employers uh, that may be providing work-based learning opportunities, you can add that or send it to me and you can we can make sure that information gets added to this page. So the first part of the page is about the program, real basic information, and then we have the link to complete the application. So you can get to the application by selecting the image, the text, or the option one, option two link. It all goes to the same place to complete the online application. Now I want to show you how to access the partner tools. Uh, in the PowerPoint, there is a short URL that is on my work mat for, or .com forward slash DEI partner. You can do that. Or in our footer, always in our footer, there is a link for partner resources. So you can select that link. And similar to how we have on the individual side, we have program guides for our partners. So you'll see we have the DEI partner guide. And on the DEI partner guide, we have list of resources, the training material. I'm recording today's uh, webinar, so we can add that to our training materials and videos. We'll also add it in the archived webinars. If you have any questions, you can always submit them through the FAQ section. And then we post uh, various updates that are being made to the DEI tools and, and resources as well. In your packet, You'll see I have Get Started and then Provide and Document Services. The resources that you have uh, printed out are these items that are available on in each of these sections. Okay. And so we'll be continuing to add more resources there as they are developed. Now the way that you will, okay, let me one step back here. Um, as I mentioned before, you have to have access to, we, you have to be given access to the DEI partner tools. And so what that means is, number one, you're going to have to have an LMI Workman account, and we're going to have to identify you as a workforce partner. So once you, uh, and that's the only way that you'll be able to access these tools. So to do that, your LWDA career planner can work with you. Um, to make sure that your location is set up in LMI WorkNet as an LMI WorkNet partner. And you can have, uh, you know, you'll have your LMI WorkNet account that you'll need to create. And then they'll let us know that, you know, uh, who you are and we'll need to know which organization you're with. And um, we can give you access to the DEI partner tools. So, once you've done that and you have your LMI WorkNet account, then what you're going to do is you're going to go into LMI WorkNet, anywhere in LMI WorkNet. You'll see the My Dashboard. You select My Dashboard. And over on the left-hand side, you're going to see an area that says Partner Tools. And once you've been given access to this, you'll see that we have the Disability Employment Initiative link. And so 
So go to, okay, I already have it. I'm going to show myself. Okay, let me double check here. The community tabs open. Let me close some of these. Okay, so we have our DEI tools, and uh, you'll see a little bit more with mine because I have state level access, so I have ac I have you know access to the different LWDAs, and uh, you'll see you have customers, teams, and reports. So um, what you're going to do is uh, you'll see you can go down your dashboard and. Your main focus, I would imagine, for the majority of you, would be the completed, the full completed application. So when you select that link, then it will give you access to that listing of customers. And as I mentioned before, we have our white section. So this is just kind of an FYI to let you know that how many people are real registrants versus not real registrants. If you ever have a question on any of these as to what does this mean, you can select the information bubble and it will give you a definition of who is included in that list. Now we'll go ahead and select an application. I'm in production. So for the webinar, uh, that's recorded and posted. Okay. So anyway, we have some next steps here. That uh, if you have the customized information for your region, again, and I've said it several times, but we can add that to the web page. Um, again, determining how the students are best to the best way to get the students in, uh, you know, the the online the full online application automatically puts them into the system, puts them into IWDS, and identifies them as a DEI enrolled customer. So that's that's obviously one approach. If there needs to be another way to do that, then we need to discuss that. And then, you know, you can go ahead, if you already have customers that are involved or in the system, um, you know, through the online application, then you can go ahead and complete any services or um, add them to IRTs and, and that kind of thing. You can go ahead and do that. Those tools are already available. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, again, you can always uh, follow the Online Workout Partner News. We'll let you know when there's new DEI-specific things that are coming out once we have you know, those individuals that are identified to have access to those tools. We can send you know, updates and let you know. Again, we'll have our weekly meetings so it's a, to keep you in the loop. And, uh, but if you follow our news, and you'll always be updated on the different types of uh, news announcements. We have a career training plan. Actually, call it, we call it at this point in time the ISEP Individualized Service and Services and Employment and Training or Training and Employment Plan. And so we're that's currently in development and getting uh, collecting feedback on that as well. And so we have you know, obviously different features that are always working on new features and enhancements for Elmi WorkNet. Uh, if you do have questions specifically for the DEI information, uh, we have the FAQ that's available in the Partner Guide, and you can submit questions through FAQ. And uh, you can also email info at elmiworknet.com. Natasha, may I say that I, we, we all generate kind of a wish list? for things we'd like okay. to see. And so do you want to stay on the phone while we talk about that? Yeah, that's fine. Or it's up to you. I didn't know. Um, it, either way. I, it, well, you know, actually, it's why don't you generate your wish list and then let's discuss it, because um, it's hard for me to hear 
everybody exactly. and the, the conversation. That's really, I can hear a few people well, but, <laughs> but then when everybody starts talking, it's really hard to distinguish what people are saying. So. Okay, that sounds fine. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And we'll look forward to working with you. Thanks, Natasha. Thanks, Thank Natasha. You. Awesome. Okay. Bye.